Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about interface modifiers. I'm going to open up my web browser to javacjava.com, select a menu, and then Java OOP tutorials. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to my interface modifiers. The following rules apply to a top level, in other words an outer non-nested interface. An interface is implicitly abstract. An interface may have only one of the following legal modifiers, public, abstract, and strict FP. The default package private access modifier is legal as well. Don't worry about strict FP, I haven't covered that one yet. If the public access modifier isn't applied to an interface, the interface source code file name must match the name of the interface. Okay, I'm going to scroll down here to this first section here. We'll create a package one on this one here. I'm going to move my browser off screen here. Now I have a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, um, you can create one real quick by right clicking, going to new shortcut, CMD, then uh, next and finish. Just that easy. All right, first thing we're going to do is type in Java C minus version or dash version, whatever you prefer. I'm running 1.8.045. The only thing I'm concerned about here is this number 8 after the first dot. That basically means that um, I'm running Java 8. Okay. Um, the interface got a major overhaul um, in Java 7. Well, not in Java 7, but in Java 8. So Java 7 still has like a major difference. It's like night and day in the thing. So I just want to make sure you want to make sure that you've got the latest version of Java, which should be at least Java 8 or better, you know, 9, 10, who knows what they're going to have by the time you watch this video. Okay, I'm going to type in cd space backslash. cd is short for change directory, and backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to do an md, which is a make directory, and then Java. I already have that folder, but if you don't, it would create it for you. I'm going to change directories to the Java folder. This is what I call my working directory. It's where I put all my packages and classes there. Now I'm going to make a directory called 1, because I'm going to have a package called 1, and I'm going to change directories to the 1 folder. I'm going to go ahead and clear my screen here, and I'm going to notepad uh, tester.java. <coughs> tester.java is going to be the name of my source code file. Hit enter on that. I'm going to just paste this stuff in here. Okay, it's a really, really simple one today. Um, package 1, that matches our directory there, right? And I'm going to be importing everything from this 2 package. So I've got this class tester and it'll implement interface 1 and interface 2. Interface 2 will be located in my 2 package. Now here is interface interface 1. It just has one simple, um, basically a string constant. String in 1 equals this string literal. Hello from interface 1. Now I went ahead and put in public static final in there just because I want to reiterate stuff from previous tutorials. Remember, all interface variables are public static final implicitly, so it always helps to go ahead and make an explicit declaration there so you just never forget. I'll even do that in my production code as well. Just like I like to put in, you know, the the default um, no argument constructor as well. It's just a just a good habit there, you know. I've always said in Java sometimes it's you know, in certain cases, I always said, you know, it's it's more important what's not there than what is there sometimes. So this is one of those cases where this is really important to remember. And if you just go ahead and put it in there, you'll always be remembering that, oh, yeah, you know, an interface, any variable in interface is automatically public, static, and final implicitly. So let's go ahead and just save this here. I'm going to come down and create that source code file for the two. Okay, make directory two. And I am going to change directories to the two. And now I'm going to a notepad. Um, I'm going to call this interface interface2.java, OK? And let's come back over here. The source code is really short. I probably could type it in, but I'm just going to cut and paste to save about you know 30 seconds. Really, really simple there. Um, so in, this is in the. Uh, Package 2 and public interface interface 2. Now the um, 
basically I've got string into equals hello from interface to. Now just a little test to see if you were paying attention. You just tell, tell yourself what should be right here, right? And then you know you can go ahead and check it if you want, but it's public static um, or public static final is right there. Okay, so I almost said abstract, but that's up here. Never mind, okay, I'm losing my train of thought. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to the tester here, right? So there is our interface two. All right, now one of the things I wanna show you is let's go ahead and save this. Let's come back up here, and I'm gonna just do a directory space forward slash s, okay? Um, you can see basically we have the one and the two folder inside of there, we got a tester.java and an interface two.java. Now, as we know, when we compile a uh, Java source code file, it will create a tester.class. I just want to make you think for a second. Will it create an interface 2.class, an interface 1.class? Hmm. Let's go ahead and type in CLS, then Java C. One slash, we're going to compile this source code file. Okay, now let's do a directory space forward slash s. Oh, sure enough, all right. So guess what? Interfaces are actually compiled into bytecode class files as well. So that's just a good tidbit of information you may wanna, wanna know if you're ever asked that there. Yeah, you know, the dot class files, not only are, can they be compiled um, actual class files, compiled interface files too as well, so. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and come back here and let's just talk about what the main method is going to do. So in class tester, I'm implementing interface one and interface two. And in the main method entry point, I'm just simply displaying to the console in one and in two, right? Now, because these are static um, variables, and I can directly refer to them right there, right? And basically, a static variable without the public and final on there would basically be a, um, a class variable, right? But instead, it's really kind of considered a constant. But anyway, the static keyword basically says, you know, there's only one copy of it and I can access it from anywhere directly. You know, I could also use the syntax, you know, interface one dot in one, right? Maybe I'll just leave that in there and we'll go ahead and compile that and run it. Okay, let's go ahead and clear our screen. Java C, let's go ahead and compile this again. And let's give it a run there. Java one, and I want to, from the one package, I want to invoke the tester method. Hello from interface one, hello from interface two. Okay, that's that's fantastic. Over here in interface two, this is a public interface interface two. Now, um, the other things that we can add to here is abstract. Now abstract is implicit there. It is there whether we put it there or we don't, right? So if we go ahead and save this, right? And we come back here and we recompile this. And by the way, when I, when I compile um, the one, from the one folder in the tester.java source code file, the Java compiler goes out and file, finds basically anything else, like we've imported two dot star and it says, oh, we're actually using a, a little bit of it there. It will go out and um, recompile that, right? As you can see, 5.03 p.m., right? Interface two, we've gone ahead and, um, it's gone ahead and compiled that. So anyway, um, Let's clear our screen. I'm gonna just run this again. Okay, we we'll get the same thing there. The other, um, the other, only other valid modifier that we can throw on there is um, strict FP, right? And that has to do with like floating point precision stuff there. I will go into that eventually on the strict FP, but you don't have to pay attention for that right now. You just have to know that that's one of the valid modifiers. Okay, let's go ahead and and run. Okay, so you can also see up here that this interface, interface one, does not have public. It has default package private access. So between that, you can see, okay, we can throw on these three access modifiers, and we can also have default access, right? So if I were to try to do something like, for example, uh, protected, right? And let's go ahead and recompile that. Error modifier protected not allowed here, so. We can't do anything like that. Now, what happens if I strip off, let's say, and make this a package private access over here? We're gonna get some sort of error, right? Make sure everything's saved up here. Let's clear our screen and get ready for the next error. K, 
Okay, interface two is not public in two, cannot be accessed from outside package, right? And that just basically means that um, you know, we no longer have public access to this, right? On number two here. So this is default level access. We can no longer access it, and that is that. So by putting public back in here, that works just essentially the same way as access on, a, on an ordinary old class, an outer class, right? Okay, there we go, back to that. All right, let's just make sure we've covered everything on the website up here. So, um, <clears throat> an interface is implicitly abstract. We went over that. An interface may have only the following legal modifiers, public, abstract, and strict FP. The default package private access is modifier is legal as well, but it's technically like no modifier. So, but don't worry about strict FP. I haven't covered that one yet. We're good to go there. If public access is applied to an interface, then the interface source code file name must match the name of the interface. Okay? All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close out of that, close out of that, get this root off the screen there. And I really don't have any any final thoughts on this one. That's just, that's pretty, pretty straightforward on that. It's just probably just more memorization, you know. Okay, we need you know, abstract kind of goes, goes, you know, with the territory here because you know it really essentially is like very similar to an abstract class you know but public same sort of access modifier permissions that an ordinary class does right and a, a regular old class cannot have protected or private uh, access modifiers on them either so it's the same as that in in that respect there and strict fp haven't gone over that but just memorize that and say okay strict fp can be applied to an interface so that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.